Hey guys, car vlog. So I'm at the cemetery here because I've been hearing for years now that PHP is dead. So since there's so many famous people in the cemetery, Leonard Cohen amongst others, I figure I might be able to find PHP's grave. So let's go out and see if we can uh, find it. So people are saying that PHP is dead. So. I'm looking around in the graveyard here. I'm trying to find the grave, the PHP grave. I've been looking for a while and I haven't been able to find it yet. So hopefully I'll be able to find it for you guys. <laughs> Who would have guessed that, eh? All right, so let's talk about whether or not PHP is dead in 2019. As usual, I'm going to lead with a conclusion, and the short answer is hell no. PHP is uh, here to stay simply because it's got such a huge user base now. 80% of websites in some form or another are run on PHP, and... Uh, You'll see with certain technologies, when they reach a certain critical mass, they reach a tipping point, that's it. They're entrenched. They're not going anywhere. Think of C++, C. Think of Java. There's several other languages. Python is at that point now. This is just the way things go, where when you get a technology, you get so entrenched, so widely used, it's not going to go anywhere. That being said, PHP has earned its right to be in this top spot. Yes, PHP had messy days way in the past, as I explained before. And I come at PHP from a Java and JavaScript programmer perspective when I got into PHP for the first time many years ago. And I wasn't a willing participant. A client, when I was doing my freelance jobs back in those days, a client actually came to me and said, we have to do this in PHP. And I wanted a gig, so I took the gig, and I started learning the value of a light and nimble scripting language relative to Java or maybe a C-sharp. Although, when I started using PHP, C-sharp was not invented yet. Now, the major criticism against PHP still are criticisms of ignorance. They are, they are criticizing an old PHP that nobody uses anymore. A lot of people who have a negative perspective vis-a-vis -vis PHP, they probably, you know what, a lot of it's probably just hearsay. They probably just heard from some other nerd, some uh, young uh, script kitty nerd who said, ah, PHP sucks, because they heard it from somebody else and they heard it from somebody else and it becomes this urban myth. Yes, PHP 10, 15 years ago, was not very, uh, shall we say, secure. It was a rough and tumble, dirty language. No question about that. But comparing today's PHP 7 versus PHP 3 would be like looking at an iPhone 1 and comparing it from 10 years ago and comparing it to a Pixel 3 and saying, look, look iPhones suck. Look look at look at this iPhone 1. It's terrible compared to the Pixel 3. Same thing. That's what a lot of people are doing today with PHP. Am I saying PHP is the best language nobody else, no other language should be used? I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that it it's a very it's a prominent language. You know, you can't argue that point when 80% of the world is running on PHP. Now, people say, well, you can't use PHP for large apps. Uh, Facebook, anybody? Facebook, Wikipedia, Facebook, Wikipedia. Here's the thing. So the reason I did this video is because of a guy used to work for me, and now he is a CTO and a co-founder of a company that's doing very well, funded by VCs in the millions, and some real big players are now involved with them. So they're quite successful, and their app is based on PHP. And they could have done chosen any language. They have millions and millions of dollars and there is a bunch of technical reasons why they did it and there is business considerations as well. Something I mentioned in the past. A couple of things. Um, 
I've always I said PHP, one of the reasons it's a good choice for small and businesses and startups is because it's a mature language. It's worked out a lot of the issues that it had in the past, and so it's dependable. Number two, it runs very fast relative to other scripting languages. It runs circles around Python at runtime. It probably it runs circles around Ruby at runtime. I'm not sure about JavaScript. I should have checked into that. But it's very fast, very performant, has a very minimal footprint, memory footprint, and CPU footprint. For that, for example, when PHP 7 came out, it's literally 50% more performant than PHP 5. PHP 7 is 50% more performant than PHP 5, and PHP 5 was much faster than Ruby. That's just the facts. So in this article by this guy, and I'm going to link to it below, Sergey Shannon, and he's a co-founder CEO of a couple of companies, seems to have a lot of success. Now, he's the typical pragmatic, experienced, in-the-field developer and entrepreneur, startup founder, somebody who's had some successes, they don't get caught up in the coders hype and they look at as i keep telling i keep teaching people or trying to teach people rather you got to pay attention to the whole landscape around languages around frameworks you may see for example you may see a great advantage of some obscure new framework wow this is so cool look what it can do it could perform five percent faster here if i'm doing this very niche thing this thing will outperform uh some other language by 25 percent. that's so cool or I, I just prefer the syntax of this language that practically nobody uses when you get into the real world of software development whether you go work for somebody or you become a freelancer or you set up your own startup you have to be cognizant. You have to be, um, if that's the right word, you have to recognize what's going on out there in the real world, right? You don't want to, as a business owner, have your app built on some rarely used tech that's going to be very expensive and very difficult to maintain. Now, you may be thinking as an employee, short-term thinking, oh, I want, to, I want to use rare tech, so then they depend on me and I can charge more. That's bad because then, you know, which, what's going to happen is you're going to find yourself having a harder and harder time finding work because you are you want to work in this specialized arena. If you really want to make a lot of money as a developer, you study your core, your fundamentals, as I say. You understand those fundamental principles as I teach. Then all of a sudden, it doesn't matter what language, what framework, you'll be able to jump into them pretty quickly. And you'll see that in comments and posts uh, on the YouTube channel. Where people, I don't ask, they volunteer, they tell you what has happened. It's not just one or two people, many people. So that's the key. You got to get out of that, that mindset that this language sucks, that language sucks. There are some rare exceptions like ActionScript, which was Flash's programming language. Capable language, but the whole Flash environment, the whole Flash ecosystem basically got killed off by Steve Jobs and uh, then Android, and it's no more. So it's kind of silly to learn ActionScript today. You know, it's just, there's nothing out there. Wow, there's stuff. You know, I'm sure there's a few niche, hyper niche implementations of Flash here and there. But again, with some few exceptions, all the modern program, programming languages, this is my consistent message, and anybody who follows my blog knows this, all the modern programming languages share uh similar quality so if you learn python or you learn php or you learn javascript you learn c sharp you learn uh, java any of these modern programming languages to move over to one or the other is not a big deal as long as you're well versed in the fundamentals that's the key to this game so anyway going back to this article he basically brings out the points that i've been talking about for many 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 years now you know, looking at the business considerations when you're looking at programming languages, um, just in also making fun of the fact that people have been talking about how PHP is dead for years and how it can't be used for large applications, even though the evidence is massive, massive that PHP is hardly dead. Um, it may not be the prettiest looking language, I admit that, in terms of the syntax, the actual code, right? It may not look pretty. Although some people find it easier to learn than JavaScript in some respects. Anyway, that's another story. So there you go. Is PHP going to be dead in 2019? No chance. No chance. It's reached critical mass many years ago. It reached that tipping point. 
it will not go away. I think PHP is going to be like the C++ of the world, the Java, the JavaScripts in the sense that it's so prevalent. It's so part woven into the web, if you will, that it's just not going to go away. It's just not going to go away. And, you know, to their credit, the PHP community is has stepped up to the plate. PHP originally was not object oriented, and they slowly got it to being fully object oriented. PHP four was like uh, halfway object oriented. PHP five was fully object oriented. PHP seven, they've sped it up quite a bit. They implemented a lot more security into the language. Now they're they're really looking to advance it. And the reason you're going to see a long lifespan with PHP is because it's got such a huge user base. It's got such a, such a huge user base. And I predict at some point in time, I don't know when, at some point in time, the script kiddies and uh, uh, the young nerdlings are going to realize this. They're going to realize, well, you know, this PHP is not so bad. Because that may seem like a bold statement, by the way. But let me tell you something. Several years ago, JavaScript was hated by programmers. JavaScript the amazing JavaScript. It was hated by programmers back in the day. And uh, with some good reason, you could argue perhaps. But JavaScript is now, of course, one of the most important languages out there today. It's in the top three. If you look at all the ratings and the, all the listings for languages in terms of popularity, you're always going to see the usual cast of characters. Java is usually number one or two. C++, C, JavaScript, PHP is always in the top five or so, sometimes in the top three, and uh, then you have the rest. So keep that in mind. So there you go. So if you're worried about PHP, don't be. If you're worried about Ruby, don't really be, to be all, totally honest with you. I make fun of Ruby. It's, it's more of a joke than anything else, but there's still Ruby opportunities out there. There's no question. Yeah, as usual, my advice I give people, look at the market around you. If you're looking for jobs, for example, before you you uh, you get caught up in this language or not or that language in terms of technical implementations or this platform or this framework, uh, Vue.js versus React versus uh, Angular, etc. Look at the local market, and the local market will help you determine that. If you're doing a startup, again, look at the local availability of talent, right? Because if you decide I want to do everything in Rust, where you know. I want to develop my applications with Rust and use the Rust web framework. I mean, it just came out. And you go out there and there's no Rust developers, you're, you're in trouble, right? Et cetera, et cetera. Consider the business implications, the real world implications of your language choices. And finally, I'll leave you with this. At the end of the day, if you're well versed in the fundamentals, it doesn't really matter if you decide to learn JavaScript and then you find out later on all the jobs are PHP. For you to pivot from JavaScript Node to PHP Laravel or PHP Symphony will be pretty easy. A few days and you're up and running. Or to go from Java, Java Spring to uh, Python Django, not a big deal, et cetera, et cetera. Because the web technology space has matured, meaning the technology, we figured out basically how to do things. And the difference between the way Node does it and Java does it and JavaScript does it and PHP does it, it's it's I would argue it's more nuanced than radical than being radically different. Whereas, and people would argue, I don't know, people might say no, there's some big differences. There are some differences, but let me tell you, compared to what was going on in the '90s versus one framework versus another, sometimes they were radically different in terms of the thinking and the approach. So there you have it. I hope this video was fun and informative. All right, that's pretty much all I got to say about this for today. Let me know if you like this video, comment. If you, uh, yeah, definitely leave a comment. Let me know. Let me know if you like this new vlogging uh, setup that I'm doing here. If you don't like the video, give me two thumbs down. If you like it, give me one thumbs up. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.